So I applied to 19 colleges in total. 15 of those were BSMD programs and four of them were pre-med schools. Now, I'm not making this video for the clickbait and the views, okay? This is one of those videos where I wanna make it for my, my real ones in the audience who really do care about their future in this college admissions process. Because the four pre-med schools that I applied to, these are not prestige schools. Now, I got into BSMD programs, right? My application was at that level, and so I wanna explain why those four pre-med schools I applied to were not like, you know, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Stanford, you know what I mean? I wanna explain to you why I picked those smaller liberal arts colleges as the schools that I ended up applying to. Who is behind me, bro? I wanna to explain to you why those pre-med schools are potentially some of the strongest schools you can go to. Now, a lot of you in my audience are really intelligent people. So I want you to be able to take that critical thinking ability that you all have and apply it to your futures in this medical admissions process. Now think about it. You wouldn't have clicked on this video if you weren't interested in becoming a doctor, right? So what's the most efficient way to do that? Well, the general resounding answer is BSMD programs. Because BSMD programs are often accelerated and they'll let you skip the one to two gap years you might need during a traditional pathway, they become the optimal way to become a doctor. However, everybody, regardless of whether you have a BSMD tier application or you're aiming for pre-med schools, you need to have the knowledge of what the best pathway for that is. Now, liberal arts schools are the key to this and let's break down why. First and foremost, the quality of education you receive in college is often something that we don't give enough attention to. The whole point of going to college is to learn, correct? That's the goal of all of this. So when you look at the regular state school that's you know just down the road from your house in some kind of university that's you know a small privatized liberal arts school that's able to personalize the level of teaching that they give you it's going to be superior now that's a clear example right everyone can reason that part out but what tends to get missed in this bigger picture is let's take a bigger state school. I think one of the, the bigger fallacies in this college admissions process, at least in, in my opinion, right, you can make whatever call you want, is that UC schools are actually like good, feasible, pre-bent schools to go to. I detest UC schools, and I'm gonna explain why. UC schools are larger state schools. So let's take the average biology class at UC Berkeley, right? A very prestigious UC school. You're going to have hundreds, if not over a thousand kids in that class. The chance that you even get to meet the professor in person is going to be considerably low, right? You go to a school like UC Berkeley, there's also the factor of talent that's coming in. All the kids in your class are going to be bright, standing out amongst those kids versus, you know, the, the very regular kids at your public high school is going to be slightly different leagues, right? There are levels to this. Now, again, let's contrast this to an excellent pre-med school. And I'm going to talk about all the four pre-med schools I applied to in a minute. But the number one pre-med school on that list that was like my backup option was Carleton College, okay? I personally, I loved everything there is about Carleton College, and it's an excellent, like, liberal arts pre-med school that falls under all the top categories that we're looking for in an institution like that, right? It's very strong in the sciences, you're getting small, personalized class sizes, and the thing about liberal arts schools, this is, if there's one takeaway from this video, the whole point of these pre-med years, if you truly want to be a doctor in the fastest route possible, is you're going to keep your head down and you're just going to grind. You want to be in an environment where you are in like the optimal condition for that. If you go to like a public state school where you're not being able to get the, the fullest extent academically, there's also a lot more distractions and the kind of like lifestyle that you're living, that's not going to get you into med school on your first try. That's the type of experience where you can, you know, live the, the average like everyday thing of like, oh, you know, I'm gonna have the, the college experience for four years and then you're gonna end up with two, three gap years. Guys, it's getting so competitive. Like, if you look at BSMD admissions alone over the last two to three years and you see the drop in admission numbers, just imagine what happens when those same kids in four years move over to med school, right? Imagine what's happening there. These are your times where you know you need to tighten up a little bit and get your life together. Have fun, but make sure that these things all come into place. Now, let's keep going, right? You're gonna compare UC Berkeley to Carleton College in a, a thousand kid class to a 50 kid class 
you don't need, like, I don't need to keep breaking this down. You know what's going to be easier to succeed in. Now, quality of education, critique, why does that matter? Well, you see, if you want to get into med school as fast and efficiently as possible, you're going to need to take your MCAT exam in college earlier on. Make sure you think about that, right? You might get maybe two years of college education in before you're forced to take that MCAT exam in your third year. That's a potential pathway. Now, within those two years of education, you're going to be taking a lot of introductory basic level science classes and classes like OCHEM and things like that that are going to prepare you for the MCAT. You want that education to be as sound as possible. And that's where these liberal arts schools really succeed. Because in those intro level classes, when they're able to become more personalized, your professor is able to work to your needs, you're able to communicate with them, you get that like even at a school like RPI, I would not recommend RPI, it's like a good pre-med school, right? Uh, but you get that like really, really close mentoring, uh, like sessions that happen outside of class. These things are all going to aid your journey. There's a reason why statistically kids that go to such liberal arts schools tend to do better on the MCAT exam. And that's a good, like fair component of your resume when applying to med school. There's also the factor of recommendation letters. What do you do about those, right? You're in a school where you have, you know, tons and tons of kids. You're not able to really, really know the professors well. Well, if those recommendation letters come out a little stinky, like that's that's not the look for you. In liberal arts schools, it, it you know it tends to be a lot easier to be able to secure those letters, which is just another reason why they're so much more uh, strong as an alternative. Another point I want to bring up that's on like a slightly different train of thought is that if you look at some of these top liberal arts schools, let's just take again Carleton College for instance. If you look at the track records of students from these schools and how they, by percentage of students, how science majors tend to go on to earn PhDs and do that kind of higher level graduate research in their fields, especially in the sciences, those statistics back the idea that students from those schools are strong in their grounded education in the sciences. And what I mean by that is that graduate level institutions, including med schools, know that students who come out of those schools are going to be well prepared for uh, you know the rigorous curriculum that comes in med school. They're not gonna have gotten some like half-assed like mediocre teaching. These you know, this is the real deal. And so that's also just going to help aid your application because schools have that level of trust in you now. Those are all the basics to why you should be applying to liberal arts schools over the traditional pre med schools. But now I want to bring in my experience with this, right? Because you can watch a lot of videos on YouTube, but you probably won't find another person that's applied to like this ratio of BSMD to like pre med schools um, in, in such a like distinct way, right? Because there's levels to this. I applied to four pre med schools, I applied to Carleton College. Okay, that was my my main backup. My next college was Reed College. Now, the, Reed is a strong like pre med school, but the main thing is I'm from Portland, Oregon, and Reed College is literally like, like it's it's not that far from my house. It's in downtown Portland, so it just made so much sense that if I was gonna have a backup school, this could be like a feasible option, and it's a, it's a strong option. Now, my last two schools, these are you know where you can start getting into like you know the mid level pre med schools, right? I had Denison University on there. You know, it's it's not incredibly hard to get into that school. And then I had like as my backup backup safety, I had Whittier College. Now here was my logic behind these four pre-med schools. I was so, so committed to BSMD. Like I wanted it. And the thing is, it wasn't like in a delusional sense. Like, you know, you see those stories of kids who apply to only Ivy League schools and then they get into none of them right? I don't, I don't believe in that kind of stuff, okay? You got to use your common sense in life. I had the validation from a college admissions counselor as well as other like, like med school and BSMD kids that my application was at that level. I had that confidence in myself that was just beyond like me having like my parents tell me, but other people. So I had um, like an intuition going into this that at least one of these BSMD programs would work out. That's why I invested so much time in applying to those 15 like integrated medical programs. Now, pre-med schools were only meant to be a backup option. So you can follow this if you're going to do something similar to me, or you can just scale this up if pre-med is going to be something that like you're, you're also investing into. Out of the four pre-med schools, I wanted there to be one like reach type school, which is really more of a match given that my resume is at the BSMD level. And then you want to have like two schools that are somewhere like in the middle between like reach in like match ish, right? And so I kind of had like Reed College in there. And then I had like Denison University. 
you know, my counselor called it a match school. Like, we're really, we're pushing safety here. And then I had, like, Whittier College is like a dead, dead, like, low safety. Now, another reason that I applied to some of these schools is that the essay requirements were also much lighter. You want to invest, if you're applying to BSMD programs, as much time as you can into the actual BSMD applications. These pre-med schools should be a little bit of an afterthought, right? Dennis University has, like, a 30% acceptance rate, bro. I can't be writing, like, seven essays for a school like this. Because some of those pre-med schools that are, like, solid liberal art schools they do expect that out of you and so you can you know look for the options within these that are more reasonable and then go end up applying to those that's your best bang for your buck my final word of advice here is i want you guys to be able to make up your mind early on before the admissions decisions come in as to whether you are going to value prestige or not because even after all of this college admissions, everything that I'm talking about in these YouTube videos, how I was so grounded in this ideology of I'm not going to go to a pre-med school for prestige, I only want to go for like, you know, being able to keep my head down and get into med school because that's what matters. I felt the pull. Like after I got I got rejected from Brown's Plimi program, right? But I still got into Brown University's undergraduate like neuroscience program. And that Ivy League prestige when I had the opportunity to go to RPI. I go to RPI's BSMD program right now. And when it's that, when, you know, I'm, I'm from the West Coast, so I tell people I'm going to RPI, and they're like, if they don't know BSMD, they're like, oh, like, where is that? Is that Rochester? Like, the, the people be asking, like, stupid stuff like that, and it, it gets to you a little bit, versus, like, Brown University, where, like, you know, I'm in my math class, like, and the, the kids next to me is like, oh, did you apply to Ivy League? It's Ivy League Day. Yeah, I got into Brown. And he's like, oh, oh my God, like, you got into, you got into Brown? When you feel those emotions, right, because they're bound to happen, they're bound to happen, I want you guys to be able to come back to your, your true values and beliefs. I think one of the best things you can do is to record a video for yourself right now explaining why you want to go to a, a, med, a pre-med school for the value that that school provides and not for prestige so that when those emotions do eventually come, you can go and watch that video again and remember your roots. It's so easy in the world of today to get lost in seeking validation from other people and uh, you know making some calls on our life that we're bound to regret at some point. And so it's in those moments that you want to be able to bring yourself back, right? That's when you have friends and family for because they're going to help you keep grounded as well and make the right call for your future. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Peace. Love you.